It's my birthday! Yay! So exciting. Okay, maybe not for you, but definitely for me. But what is exciting for you is that I have 15 more words for you that you can add to your advanced vocabulary for the workplace that will make you sound more professional, more confident, and just overall broaden your vocabulary. I have created quite a few of these videos now, so if you have not seen them all, I definitely recommend heading over to my channel, finding the ones you have not watched, as they will be very helpful and informative for you. If you have just discovered this channel and you're thinking, who is this person and why is she telling me about her birthday? Hi, my name is Catherine, I'm a business English teacher and I work with intermediate to advanced level students, helping them to improve and level up their English skills, particularly in the workplace and with a special focus on business English. So if that is you and you are interested in improving your English, sounding more professional in the workplace, definitely subscribe, like this video if you can. And as I have birthday celebrating to do, let's not discuss any further and get straight into the video. Our first word is generate. Generate. Now generate is just another way of saying produce. It's a synonym for produce. In business English, you often hear the phrase generate leads. I have to generate leads or I was given the task to generate new leads. And what this means is contact people in order to generate, produce, create potential new clients and customers. Look at these examples now. The marketing team implemented a new social media campaign to generate leads and increase brand awareness amongst the target demographic. Here, what we are saying is the marketing team put out a social media campaign to get more interest, to produce more interest, to produce more emails, followers, subscribers, sales, whatever it is they are trying to produce or create. Generate. You can use generate instead. The company invested in advanced data analytics software to generate real-time insights from customer behavior, enabling more informed decision-making. So generate real-time insights just mean produce, create real-time in real life data analytics, ideas, statistics to be able to target their customers. Generate is a word you can use instead of produce. Reverse. Now I believe you know this one. Reverse is to change or undo a previous action, but it's quite a nice word to use instead of saying we want to undo or we want to fix or we want to find a solution. You can say we want to reverse the decision, reverse the process and go forwards with whatever your solution is. So an example for you. The company decided to reverse its decision to outsource customer service and bring it back in-house. Meaning the company made a decision, they realized it wasn't working how they expected or it wasn't improving the business in any way, so they reversed it and tried something else. Of course it means changing, but you don't just have to say, oh, they changed their mind or they changed what they were doing. You can say they reversed to a previous way of doing things. Due to declining sales, the management had to reverse their expansion plan and focused on cost cutting measures. So here we can understand the management had an expansion plan. They wanted to make things bigger. They wanted to improve things, but they realized that they weren't making enough money. They weren't making enough sales. So they reversed this decision. They chose not to go with that decision. They chose to do something else instead. Upend, upend. To completely change or disrupt the way something has typically been done. Now initially this may sound like a negative. If you upend something, you're completely changing it, doing things differently to the way everyone else has previously done them. But it can often lead to positive outcomes because you were trying something completely different. Maybe than what the market or the company or the team is used to. So you're doing something different, trying something out, not following the trend, not doing what everyone else is doing. The emergence of online streaming services upended the traditional television industry. So think about how we watch TV now. It's with Netflix or Apple TV, Amazon Prime, Hulu. There are so many streaming services that people don't 
watch traditional television anymore. They don't flick through the channels. They just pick a series or a movie that they want to watch and watch it. So initially, Netflix, let's say Netflix was the first one that came along, what they were doing was completely different to what everyone else had seen before, which could sound like possibly it wouldn't work, but it did work. And they have completely changed, upended the market, the competition. The introduction of a new technology upended the market dynamics, forcing competitors to adapt quickly. So again, let's use Netflix as the example. Netflix worked so successfully that all competitors had to follow. Apple had to bring out Apple TV. Amazon had to bring out Amazon TV. Disney had to bring out Disney Plus. They changed the market for everyone else. So to upend is to completely change something, but it doesn't always have to be negative. It can lead to very positive outcomes. Verification, verification. Now this means to confirm the accuracy or truth of something. The verb being verify, to verify. So often when you use an open source like ChatGPT, you will have to verify the information first, meaning you don't know where this information has come from, you don't know who posted this online, so you need to check that what ChatGPT is telling you is correct. This would be you verifying the information. So verification is the noun for this process. You need to have verification that something is true, is accurate, it's not false or a lie. Before processing the refund, the customer service team requires verification of purchase through a receipt or order number. The bank conducts thorough verification checks to prevent fraudulent transactions and protect customer accounts. So both of these examples just demonstrate you need to check the customer or the client before you can go ahead with the transaction. And this check is the verification process. So you may say something in the workplace like, I need to verify the documents before sending them on. Or I need to verify the candidate or clients before I agree to work with them. They have passed the verification process. I am now going to meet them and find out what they need me to do. Moderation, moderation. This can be used outside of the workplace as well, actually. Moderation means to not overdo something, maintaining balance or restraint. So there's a very famous phrase, everything is good for you in moderation. And what it means is if you don't overdo it, everything can be good for you. Chocolate, sugar, coffee, fast food, all the things that are bad for us can be good for us if it's in moderation, if it's once a month or once a week, for example. In the workplace, when we talk about moderation, it's the same thing. It's not overdoing something. It's keeping that balance, keeping a level head so you can see what we need to do, what we don't need to do, where we should put our efforts. The CEO emphasized the importance of moderation in spending to ensure long-term financial stability. So don't spend too much, don't overspend, otherwise long term we will see some issues financially. The success of the project relied on the team's ability to exercise moderation in their use of resources and time. So by everyone looking at what would be overdoing it and what would be not enough, they were able to adjust their schedules and say I can spend 10 hours on this or I can only spend 8 hours on this. I'll happily spend 12 hours. They're not spending too much time on a project that isn't going to pay off. So instead of saying too much money, too much time, too much energy, too many resources, you can say, we need to make sure we spend in moderation or we divide our time moderately in moderation. Outlook, outlook. Now our outlook or the outlook is how we see the future or our views on our goals and targets. So for example, someone with a negative outlook would be someone that doesn't see the future positively. They only see problems or they see something not working. They don't see the point in putting their time and energy into this. Somebody with a positive outlook sees the goals and the future as achievable. 
They can do it. They can put the time and energy into this. It is going to be a positive for them. So when we give an example like the company's outlook for the upcoming fiscal year is optimistic with projected growth in sales and market share. Now, fiscal year just means financial, financial year. But the company's outlook, the company's future, their goals, their targets seem optimistic. They seem achievable. You could even rephrase the sentence and say the outlook for the company is optimistic. So the way we see the future, the progress we see, despite initial setbacks, the entrepreneur, ma entrepreneur maintains a positive outlook on the industry and remains determined to succeed. So again, even though they've had lots of challenges and not been very successful in some areas, this entrepreneur remains positive, feels positive, has a positive view going forwards. They have a good outlook going forwards. The next one sounds very similar, but it's not. Output, output. And this is the amount of something produced by a person, a machine, a process. So instead of saying the result of, or what I did, or, or what the process made, or the product that was created because of this process, you can say the output. So the factory increased its output by implementing new efficiency... Ugh, effi ugh. Drink some water, Catherine. The factory increased its output by implementing new efficiency measures in the production line. So the output, what is created by the production line. The result of is the synonym for the result of or the work created. The marketing team's output significantly improved after hiring additional creative talent. So the amount of work they could produce increased after they had new people added to their team. I'll give you an example of myself personally. It might help you understand this phrase. My output for YouTube is not as high as I would like it to be because I work full time. If I didn't work full time, I would do three or four videos a week and they would be longer videos. But because of my other commitments, my output is smaller than I would want it to be. So the amount of work I can do or can create or finish. Weaken or strengthen. Now I know you know the meanings of these, weaken or strengthen. Weaken is to become weaker, strengthen is to become stronger. But the reason I've included it is because you can use it instead of increase and decrease. So if you're giving a presentation and you've said increase and decrease 15 times and you feel like it's becoming repetitive and people are losing interest, you can say weaken and strengthen instead to kind of mix it up, switch it up. The competitor's aggressive pricing strategy threatened to weaken our market position, decrease our position on the market, weaken us, make us weaker. A successful marketing campaign can strengthen brand loyalty and increase customer engagement. Strengthen just means increase, but this sentence would have been boring if I said can increase brand loyalty and increase customer engagement. It kind of sounds repetitive, but strengthen brand loyalty and increase customer engagement sounds a bit different. Capitalize, capitalize. Now this just means to take advantage of a situation or position. And typically it's related to finances. So if you capitalize on something, you're making money off of it. But not always. It can also be opportunities or exposure to something. Capitalizing on a situation means using it to your advantage. Let's say, for example, your English is perfect. You got the highest score on your IELTS exam. You could capitalize on this by applying for English speaking jobs. It's using something to your advantage. So the company aimed to capitalize on the growing trend of eco-friendly products by launching a new line of sustainable goods. Now, personally, I think capitalizing on environmentally friendly products, green products is not moral or ethical, but what this sentence is saying is because everyone is so interested in global warming and climate change and it's a big topic at the moment, this company capitalized on that, used it to their advantage by releasing more eco-friendly sustainable products. 
After identifying a gap in the market, the entrepreneur quickly moved to capitalize on it by introducing an innovative solution. So the entrepreneur recognized there was this gap and instead of letting the gap pass them by, they capitalized on it. They used it to their advantage and created a product to fill this gap. Similarly, commercialize, commercialize. Now this is to make something suitable or available to make profit. Commercializing a business is to make it more accessible, reliable, productive, cheaper, so that profit can be made. The research team's breakthrough innovation needed further development before it could be commercialized and brought to market, meaning the idea wasn't quite yet ready to put on the market. It wasn't yet ready to sell. So it wasn't commercialized yet, wasn't ready to sell. The company's decision to commercialize its software as a service platform proved to be highly profitable. So in this example, maybe the company initially had the software just for them, but they started selling it as a service and it became more profitable for them. Same with social media nowadays. Previously, social media was just something we played with to pass the time, posted on, looked at our friends' stories, pictures. Now you can commercialize your social media and have it so that people pay you to post. Or every time you promote a product, you get money, you get commission from that. So it's making something available to make money when previously you didn't make money off of it. Integrate, integrate. Now this means to include or combine. And this can be used to talk about people, businesses, operations, products, skills, anything really. If you move to a new country, you may struggle to integrate, meaning you may struggle to include yourself in the society because it's a different language, different culture, different people, different mindset. If you start a new job or a new school, new university, you may struggle to integrate because everybody has already made friends and you're just starting. It's combining or including yourself in something. But similarly, if two businesses are combined, they may struggle to integrate at first because they've both been doing their business separately and they think they know what's best. But when they start working together, they suddenly realize they need to compromise and find a way to work well together. The new software system was designed to seamlessly integrate with existing infrastructure to minimize disruption during implementation. So in this example, seamlessly integrate combine effortlessly, seamlessly, with no problems, no issues. Merging the two departments allowed the company to integrate their resources and streamline operations for improved efficiency. So combining these two departments allowed the company to combine the skills, the resources, the teams. Incorporate, incorporate. Now this is similar to integrate, but the difference is with integrate, you are talking about how the processes work together or how the people work together. With incorporate, you're just bringing something extra on, you're adding something else. And the first thing to note is that when a business becomes a legal entity, a legal corporation, it's often called incorporated. So when you see this INC after the name, Google Inc, Business Inc, Monsters Inc, it just means incorporated, a legal business or firm. But in general, incorporate means to include, combine, similar to integrate. You could incorporate your previous skills into your new role. So for example, I teach business English, but my background is in marketing and working in, in a corporation. So I have knowledge on how businesses run and work and the type of language expected from you in a corporate environment and interviewing and recruitment. So I'm incorporating those skills with my new passion, which is teaching English. And you could do the same. You might have previous skills that you didn't think were relevant to your current job, but actually they are. The company decided to incorporate customer feedback into the product development process to ensure better alignment with market needs, meaning they didn't just make the product, they also took customer feedback when they were making the product. They incorporated customer feedback to make sure they were making exactly what the customer wanted. The revised business plan incorporated suggestions from various stakeholders 
to enhance its strategic approach. So the business plan took combined suggestions from other people to make it more successful. Vital, vital. If you watched my previous advanced vocab video last week, you will know I told you about the word paramount and vital is a synonym for paramount. It means important for success, very important for success. Without this thing, you cannot be successful. Effective communication is vital for building strong relationships with clients and stakeholders, meaning without effective communication, you cannot be successful with your clients and stakeholders. This is a vital aspect. The timely delivery of raw materials is vital to maintaining production schedules and meeting customer demand. Without this timeline, without this delivery, you cannot succeed. Think of vital as more than important. Conduct, conduct. Now conduct is a synonym for to do, to carry out, to proceed with something. The audit committee conducted a thorough review of the company's financial statements. So they did a thorough review. They did a thorough review of the company's financial statements. They could have just written here, the audit committee did a thorough review but conducted is much more professional and advanced. I conducted six interviews last week, meaning I held, I did six interviews last week. I conducted research, I did research. Now the other way we can use conduct is in this example, the employee's professional conduct during client meetings earned praise from the management. Now what we mean here is behavior. So in the first example, when we use it as a verb, what we are saying is, is something we did. But when we use it here as a noun, professional conduct or the employee conduct, we are saying your behavior, the way you do something. So conduct as a verb, conducted, we conducted something. To conduct something means to carry out, to proceed. And as a noun is your behavior, how you do that thing. And our last word today is feasible, feasible. Now this means possible to do something. It is possible. And the opposite is infeasible, infeasible. That would mean it's not possible. You can't do it for some reason. Before proceeding with the expansion plan, the management conducted a feasibility study to assess potential risks and returns, meaning they did research to figure out if this plan was even possible. Could they do it? The project manager presented a detailed proposal outlining the feasible timeline and budget for the new product launch. Feasible timeline means the possible timeline. Can we do it? How fast can we do it? What amount of time do we have to complete this? Feasible. Now the way you could use this is let's say for example you've been asked to complete a task that you don't think you can complete. Instead of saying I can't do this by Friday, you can say it will be infeasible for me to complete this by Friday. Could I have some help or assistance? Or the alternative. Hi Catherine, do you think you'd be able to create 10 template emails to send to our most high value clients. Yes, of course, that will be feasible. I'll have it done and sent to you by the end of today. It is possible, you can do it. So that's a very positive way to end this video. Do you think it's feasible that you can improve your English using my videos, using my channel? If you are not already subscribed, please do so. I check every comment, even the bad ones. I check the bad ones because we need to improve, don't we? It's vital that we incorporate other people's feedback into our conduct so that we can improve ourselves in the future. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. I hope you have a fantastic week. I'm off to go and eat birthday cake and I will see you next time. Goodbye.